Good morning, everybody. Palm Sunday, the 28th of March, 2021. Welcome, one and all. I just pray that you enjoy the service with us, that you are truly blessed as we share together, and that, yeah, just enjoy God. I mean, this is it. This is the season, Holy Week, the, the passion of Jesus. This is what this is all about. So be blessed as we share together this morning. Just a couple of notices. Um, please continue to adhere to protocols, wear your masks, do what you have to do, social distancing um, for next week. Um, a reminder, Monday to Wednesday, we have a short reflection on social media. Thursday will be the Tenebrae service, 6.30 at the church um, in the evening. Good Friday, 9 a.m. service. Easter service, Sunday, 9 a.m. So, yeah, we're carrying on with our services. We are open. Um, but if you're not there, that's fine. I will record all the services and I will send them out on WhatsApp straight after the services have concluded. Um, they might not quite be the same as the one that's in the church because I'm recording them at home just to, to make them easier and clearer. So that, But the message is the same. They, it's the exact same sermon. Um, so, yeah, just be blessed as you receive them. All right, let's turn to God this morning, shall we? Our call to worship is taken from Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord for His good. His love endures forever. Let Israel say, His love endures forever. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give thanks for you answered me. You became my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. The Lord has done this and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. O Lord, save us. O Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord, we bless you. The Lord is God. And he has made his light shine upon us with bows in hand. Join in the festal procession up to the horns of the altar. You are my God and I will give you thanks. You are my God and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, as we celebrate the triumphal entry into Jerusalem this morning, as we come to just worship you, acknowledge you, place you front and center in our lives, Lord, we once again feel the excitement bubbling with inside us. Hosanna, Hosanna, shouted the crowd. And we shout, praise the Lord this morning. Praise the Lord. For he is good. Lord, we thank you that you are always with us, that you journey with us, no matter the season, no matter the, the valley or the highs, you are always there. Thank you, Lord, for loved ones, for the season where we can go and be with family and friends. If we travel, Lord, keep us safe. Um, but Lord, may we always remember that you are our God our salvation, our rock, our redeemer. And you did all this through your son, Jesus, for us. To set us free from the burden of sin, to make your grace abound more abundantly than we can ever imagine. For someone to give his son as a sacrifice for another. Lord, this is what we're celebrating. And it calls us, it forces us in a sense, Lord, to get down on our knees and say, Father, forgive me, a sinner. Forgive me, a sinner. Lord, as we hear your word and your message this morning, Lord, may you be exalted. May you be glorified, honored and praised. Lord, we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Right, our reading this morning is taken from the Gospel of Mark, 
Mark chapter 11, verses 1 to 11. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why are you doing this, tell them the Lord needs it and will send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, What are you doing untying the colt? They answered as Jesus had told them, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went to the temple. He looked around at everything. But since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Just that far this morning, and we ask that the Lord bless that reading to us. Um, yeah, I have a relatively short journey this morning, but the Lord laid it on my heart just to try and bring together the whole Lenten journey that we've been on. Just to try and pull it all together into as a preparation, as it were, for, for going, going into a, to Holy Week. Um, for me, and I, and I pray for all of you, this has been an amazing Lenten journey. We started the journey on Ash Wednesday, um, a social media uh, presentation, with the sense of God calling us to return to Him. Now, I know we are challenged by this because we say, yeah, but I am a Christian. I don't, yeah, but there's a deeper question. There's something that lies with inside that says, are we at the foot of the cross? Or are we more on the outside of the circle? And that's really the underlying message, this, this clarion call, as it were, to, to come closer to God. And that challenge, that coming closer to God, did not change as we ch journeyed through Lent. Um, the five weeks, the five Sundays, challenged us firstly to reflect on the Ten Commandments, followed by the sermons. In week one, we visited Noah, the covenant between God and Noah, and by extension, you and I. A covenant for us to return to God. Second week, we visited Abraham and Sarah. Again, a covenantal message calling us to reflect on who God is in our lives and ask questions of how much of ourselves are we prepared to relinquish to God. Week three gave us an insight into God's wisdom and power and asked the question, why isn't that reflected in our lives? The simple answer, we're still too self-centered. Week three, we also were reminded that we are God's beloved, created masterpieces, created in His image. And once again, challenged to look at how we reflect that to the outside world. Week four was all about being stuck, dead in our faith, continually being transformed and renewed, uh, the renewing of our minds, as Paul calls it. And then week five, last week, we had to look at the high jump. We used high jump and pole vaulting as a analogy for the bar that Jesus has set for us and asked whether we're up to the challenge to go there. Do we want to go there? Do we, do we need to go there? All those questions came out through last week. This was all undergirded by a reflection through Isaiah 59 in the Bible studies in the week, um, which just added another dimension. You know, the, the preface of Isaiah 59, sin, confession, and redemption. So it's all there and all sort of prepared us for this moment. Rather hectic, but, but as I said, it prepared us for the start of Holy Week. It has prepared us for the kickoff 
as it were, to the right foot, the right frame of mind. And it brought us to where we are today. Palm Sunday, the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. We've just read it in Mark 11, 1 to 11. Quite an, an interesting passage. You know, all the, all the um, Gospels have it in there. This picture of Jesus coming in. You know, there's mention of Jesus weeping over Jerusalem. There, you know, there's different ones. Go and read them in the different Gospels. But in essence, Palm Sunday is about celebrating the coming of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. It is the day that we, with burning, emotionally charged spiritual hearts, begin to follow closely in the footsteps of Jesus. Now, those are powerful words. And I wonder if we ever get emotionally charged. And it's, I do. I love Easter. I, I really do. I've mentioned it before. It's emotional for me. From highs to lows to just this deep reflection. Um, and I really enjoy following Jesus. Like I've often said, I try and put myself in the disciples' shoes and sort of live each moment rather than knowing the answer. Just living right here and now. We recall how he rode triumphantly into Jerusalem on a donkey, how he weeps over the city as people greet him, singing, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. The idea that the Messiah has arrived, the kingdom of God is approaching, took over the emotions. People were screaming in the street, throwing their jackets, throwing branches. They were out of their minds. Do we allow ourselves to worship God with such an abandon? Do we allow ourselves to worship God with such abandon? Because the kingdom of God is here. We are living it. The Lord's prayer says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Palm Sunday. It has been fulfilled. It's going to be fulfilled again at the second coming. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Jesus himself says in Mark 1.15, The time has come. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. But as with everything in life, expectations are different. And before we explore some of these expectations, allow me to ask us all this morning, what are our expectations this Easter? Are we expecting anything? What are your expectations, my expectations of Jesus? The Jews were expecting a Messiah. Someone set apart, anointed, a powerful deliverer, a political leader in the Ark of David. They even sang, blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. They expected an army. The crowd, because of the miracles and the power of Jesus, expected restoration of Israel and not the kingdom of God. They wanted the Romans out. And Jesus, well, he came to lay down his life. He did not come to start a rebe rebellion, a revolution. In the true sense as we know it. He came to bring the good news. His mission was to preach about the kingdom of heaven. I mentioned it earlier. Luke puts it this way saying of Jesus that the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind. To set the oppressed free. To proclaim. Proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Jesus, confident in God, was ready to ride into the city for you and for me. So let me ask again. 
What are your expectations this Easter? Are you expecting something? What are your expectations of Jesus? In conclusion, the triumphal entry 2,000 years ago has happened. Prophecy fulfilled. Holy Week lies before us. But you and I know there is one prophecy still to be fulfilled, and that is Jesus returning again. What an entry that will be. Trumpets riding on a cloud. It's just going to be phenomenal. But that time, when he does come, will not be to offer himself for sin, but rather to offer eternal salvation for those who believe. Are you ready? Because sadly, if not, that day will be a day of condemnation. That's what we believe. So as we await that triumphal coming, let us be prepared let us continue to fight the good fight. Let us continue to be faithful and obedient, serving with righteousness, joy, hope, and peace. Always remembering Luke 19.38, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, what a moment. Yo, I mean, it must have been amazing. All these throngs of people just shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna. Um, yeah, expectations were different. You know, but Lord, we have the, the privilege of knowing the whole story. And Lord, for me, for us, that should make us more excited. It should really bring a wellspring of emotions and joy and peace and hope. And, your oh Lord, we should be blown away at this time of the year. We should be like Moses when he came down from visiting you. They had to put a cloth over his face because it shone so brightly. Lord, may we shine brightly this Easter. May we be a shining light, as you call us to be. Oh Lord, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thank you for joining us this morning. I pray that you've been truly blessed. Celebrate. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. The Lord has arrived. Easter is upon us. Seek and you will find. Search. Search. Knock. The door will be opened. Jesus will come in. That's the promise of Easter. And it all starts today in Palm Sunday. And I say to us all this morning, now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, both now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace. Shout Hosanna as you leave. And remember always, you are God's dearly beloved child.